Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to our service this week. And you may have had a clue from the pictures that we've been seeing that today is World Refugees Sunday. And so we're looking at what we can do for refugees and what is our Christian duty to our neighbours and people in the world less fortunate than ourselves. So I welcome you this morning to our service and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start off with a hymn uh, which Tamara is going to play as she played our intro. Uh, For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord. So we invite you all to join in worship on this day when we think of all those people who are forced to leave their homes and seek sanctuary elsewhere. So some words of invitation. Come, O people of God, let us worship the Lord. Let Let us us kneel kneel before before the Lord, Lord, our God and Maker, gathered as we are from east and west, from south and north. We We do not adhere to to earthly categories categories or worldly distinctions. distinctions. Here it does not matter what language we speak or what land we come from. It It does does not not matter matter how we got got here or or how long it has been. In this place, we are no longer strangers and aliens. 
We are all citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Amen. So we are indeed all members of the household of God here in our parish, in this country and in the world. But sometimes we seem to forget whose people we are that we are gods and so we come to God in confession and we pray to him. Ever merciful God, you said, let us make humankind in our own image. Forgive, Forgive us, we, we pray, for the, for the times we have, have only recognized you in those, those who look, think, and act, act like, like us. You said, six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray, for the, for the times, times we have imagined ourselves too important to rest, and treated others as unworthy of time off. You said, you shall not reap to the very edges of your fields or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the alien. Forgive us, we pray, for the times we have hoarded your blessings and acted as if the poor, the homeless and the refugee deserve their reality. You said, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray, for the times, for the times we have closed doors, doors hearts and, and churches to those, those whom we judge too strange or different. You said, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray, for the times we have hated, brooded, divided, hurried, been cruel, stingy, disloyal, half, and self-indulgent. Lord, in your great mercy, forgive us, we pray. Through your Holy Spirit, transform us into bearers of hope and healing. Here, here and, and now, on earth, earth as, as it is, is in heaven. So now I'm going to invite Sheila to come and tell us a story of one particular refugee. Hello, I'd like to bring you this morning Farhad's story. At just 16 years old, Farhad and his twin brother were forced to flee their home with little certainty that they would make it to safety. Farhad and his brother began the dangerous journey to Europe. In Farhad's own words, it was really difficult. It wasn't safe. After many trans traumatic months, they made it to the jungle the large refugee camp outside Calais. They had no clothes or belongings, only what they arrived in, and every day was a struggle. Every day there was fighting, fire, and police, remembers Farhad. Seeing no other way out, Farhad and his brother joined hundreds of refugees each night to make the long walk to the lorry terminal, where they would hope to make it onto a lorry headed for the UK. Every night they would try to escape. Every night the guards would turn them back. Lots of people had accidents with the lorry, explains Farhad. After five difficult months in the camp, Farhad finally made it onto a lorry, but he was unsure whether his brother had been successful. He waited it out. And the next thing he knew, he was staring at a British police officer. Once in the UK, 
It was not the end of the difficult journey for Farhad. He could speak very little English and he had no family or friends in the UK for support. I couldn't speak properly. I couldn't understand. I tried to improve my English as fast as possible, explains Farhad. It took a month before he was placed in a foster care because the Home Office wrongly assessed his age. Still with no contact from his brother and with very little contact with his family back home, Farhad felt alone and was struggling to adjust to life in the new city. When we are coming here new, we are like blind people which see nothing. After one month, Farhad got the call from his twin brother and the two were finally reunited in the UK. It was a great moment, says Farhad, because I'd really missed him. Both were still trying to recover, but at least they were together. They were referred to the Children's Society where Farhad attended a weekly youth group and met a specialist refugee and migrant project worker, Alison. Alison helped with things like college applications and immigration meetings and through one-to-one -one support, Farhad is beginning to recover from the trauma he faced. She always tried to understand, Farhad says with a smile. Farhad and his brother are still waiting a decision on their case for asylum, but they now have the support they need to build their lives. Farhad attends college and hopes one day to study politics and to work for the United Nations where he can use his experience to help others. Now I'd like to hand over to Heather who's got our Bible reading for today. The reading this morning is taken from Genesis 21 verse 1 to 21. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age? The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking, and she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly, because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy your slave and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on his, her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Bathsheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bowshot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you so much for that. Now, we have a slightly different confession of faith this morning. Our confession of faith that Steve will put up on the screen is the Belhar Confession of Faith. And it was adopted in 1986 by the World Council of Churches. And it came out of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. And it seems very suitable for today. So may we all say together the confession of faith. We believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who gathers, protects, and cares for the church through word and spirit. We believe in one holy, universal Christian church, the communion of saints called from the entire human family. We believe that God has revealed himself as the one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people, and that in a world full of injustice and enmity, we believe that God is in a special way the God of the destitute, the poor and the wronged. To the one and only God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be the honour and glory for ever and ever. Our uh, religious faith, I suppose, could be summed up in seven words. Love God, love your neighbour and yourself. In Leviticus it says, you shall also love the stranger as yourself. In fact, in at least 37 times in the Bible, this passage is repeated one way or another. There is no other ethical requirement so forcefully enjoined in the Holy Bible. I wonder why. Perhaps it's because people found it difficult to love the stranger and had to be reminded over and over again. To love the neighbour includes loving the stranger. The neighbour nearby, well they're a bit like us. But the stranger? The stranger is someone who's different. Someone from another ethnicity or skin colour or nationality or identity. Perhaps that's why Abraham and Sarah sent Hagar and Ishmael away. And they had to go and seek a new life and hope in refuge. We heard the story of Farhad earlier. People have come to Britain as migrants and refugees over many years. And so many have been grateful for sanctuary here. In our world today, some 65 million people have lost protection of their countries and are seeking sanctuary in another place. Every two seconds, someone is forced to flee for safety. Every day, 44,000 people are driven from their homes. Many have to take treacherous journeys. They go out on unseaworthy boats and thousands perish along the way. People from these islands have been benefited over the years from hospitality from other countries. And people, when we travel abroad, we love the hospitality we receive. An old Celtic proverb reads, it is in the shelter of each other that people live. Human warmth and welcome and friendship are the best form of sanctuary. And we can all be sanctuary to one another. So World Refugee Sunday is a time when the church has an opportunity to commit ourselves to celebrate and continue to build hospitality and give sanctuary to all, especially those whose lives are most vulnerable, most in danger. In this time of COVID-19, those who have to flee their homes are even more scared and in danger than ever. Today, let us hold in our prayers all those who have to seek refuge in another country. I close with some words written over 200 years ago by an African man who had been enslaved, who won his freedom, and then wrote a book. It's called The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Odula Equiano, the African, written by himself. It's his story of seeking freedom, resisting oppression, 
He concludes a, a long and detailed book with those words. What makes any event important unless it, by its observation we become better and wiser and learn to do justly, love mercy and walk humbly before God? The values of justice, mercy and humility will inform our behaviour as we live our lives. So may we commit ourselves to this today. Now we're going to go over to Wendy Howe for our intercessions. Let us pray. To the bidding, O oh God, we pray, the response is, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This should now be showing on your screens. So let us pray. O oh God, in whose image we are created, we thank you for the reminder today that you are a God of love, that through Jesus we are reconciled with you and that in Jesus we are called to be reconciled with one another. As we bow our heads, we are reminded that Jesus lived, died, rose and ascended, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And though we often settle for a concept of salvation that is merely philosophical or emotional, we see that Jesus and his earliest disciples did not, that they, alongside of proclaiming your grace and mercy, were bearers of healing and hope for those who suffered in mind, body, spirit and circumstance. With that in mind, O oh God, we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for all of the 70 million people who have been forced from their homes by extreme poverty, hunger, war, persecution, and environmental degradation. O oh God, we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For all of the men, women and children afloat on the sea, uncertain whether they will ever again touch land. O oh God, we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For all who travel through areas that we only see as black lines on our maps and atlases, O oh God, we pray, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For all trapped in modern day slavery, forced to work in fields and on streets. O oh God, we pray, May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For all the parts of your body we are tempted to refer to as they and them. O oh God, we pray. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We also pray, 
do not allow us to comfort ourselves with the words we utter or the details that weigh heavily upon our hearts. And now we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you for those prayers. I think we have a couple of notices this morning before our final hymn. Um, one of the notices is to thank everybody who took part in the yeah. big lockdown quiz. So many thanks to Margie for that and for everyone who took part. I understand it was a great success and we look forward to the next one, Margie. Our second notice is about the reopening of our churches. Um, now that the wardens have decided that we can perhaps reopen our churches for private prayer, we obviously need to get them cleaned. And so we need volunteers from across the parish to help clean our churches. Please notice though that those who are shielding or guarding, those over 70, should please say, stay safe, stay at home. So Croft, Monday the 22nd and Tuesday the 23rd, from 10 to 12 and 2 till 4. At Broughton Astley, Friday the 26th, 9.30 till noon. And the good news is at Stony Stanton, the volunteer list is full, but if you can help to build the cleaning rotor, which will have to be a regular thing, please let Malcolm know or if you want any more, uh, let Richard, Ed, Tamara or Sharon know. But your help would be greatly appreciated. Please do help us to get our churches back open again. And we look forward to the time when we can have them fully open. We have a, another hymn, thanks to Tamara. And the hymn is Beautiful Brokenness. And we're going to have that now.
Thank you, Tamara. A lovely hymn of Graham Hend Kendrick's that. Just before our blessing, I'd like to say a big thank you. Thank you to Steve, to Heather, to Tamara, to Wendy, and to everyone who helped put this together. And so a blessing. God bless us as we journey through indifference in search of action, through war in search of peace, through oppression in search of freedom, through hate in turn in search of acceptance, through life in search of you. God bless us as we journey. Amen. Amen.